Good afternoon. We are going to speak with Matteo Alessi of the Alessi Group. Welcome to the show. How would you define a luxury product? What, what in your well, sort of mind? It is very difficult okay. to define luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain characteristics that are um, within probably any definition of luxury, mm -hmm. quality, mm -hmm. high price, exclusivity somehow, um, status. Mm -hmm. But then in our case, as I tried to convey during my presentation, an element of the luxury we propose is uh, satisfying the needs, not the primal needs, primary needs mm -hmm. of the person, those that satisfy through functionality. Uh, but the other needs, needs of personal satisfaction, needs of interaction with products that evoke feelings and emotions, okay. uh, needs for that something else, something beyond what you usually get in life. And I believe this is uh, the way I would define luxury. Now, um, for a product like LSE, you know, it works very well in the European market because you know you know what you know the tableware in every country <coughs> is different, or yes. the cooking vessels are different. You know, so how impos important does it become for, for a brand like yours to sort of move into other cultures and see what they sort of need or use or, you know, utilize and then create a product yes. around that? It, it is very important for us. It's very, very important. Um, we do it in a lot, of, a lot of different ways through, uh, well, as you were saying, by traveling and working in certain countries, you do understand and pick up these differences. But on the other side, we like working with designers from all over the world. Okay. We like seeing what the creative culture in every part of the world could bring to the table, let's say. Okay. Um, and of course, when that, that, that's a fairly simple uh, example, in the past we worked with a North African designer. Okay. And he designed a couscousier. Mm -hmm. It's a product made to cook and serve couscous, which okay. is definitely not a European uh, food. So when you work with these kind of designers that have been influenced by a culture, that have been living in a certain country, they help you understand a lot. They, they bring that to the discussion and it is very interesting and very useful for have us. Have you ever sort of explored the works of any Indian sort of designer? Uh, um, not yet. Okay. Not yet. But it is very interesting for us. We're doing a, a workshop at the moment in China okay. to try and see what sort of influence we could get from there. Okay. And definitely India is a very interesting country. I mean, you have a culture that is thousands of years old. Okay, also it seems that your co company has had recently sort of developed this um, um, culture of including people from different walks of life, I believe architecture, designers. And how does that help, you know? I mean, if, if you're not like a product yes. designer and you're somebody like an architect or something who's sort of designing for you, I mean, how do you think they bring in that extra value or they bring in oh, that extra so. insight? Actually, rather than lately, it's been uh, since the 70s. Okay. Uh, we started working with artists from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, and all over the, the different fields mm -hmm. of art. Um, as I was saying before, our role is that of bringing creativity to the masses. Okay. And it doesn't matter really where creativity stands, whether it is an architect, a designer, a painter, a sculptor, a musician, or whatever, for as long as, of course, we have a certain core competence in product development, and we work on that. Mm -hmm. But just to give you an example, we did two very important projects where we designed architects that never designed an object to design a tea and coffee set, okay. one in the early 80s and one in the early 2000s. And it was very interesting to see how they influenced. Okay. And at the same time, in another research project, we work with musicians such as Brian Eno, mm -hmm. for example, painters working on patterns for porcelain. And it was very interesting. What are we supposed to look forward to, LSE, in the next, in, in your fall, winter, or you know, the next collection that's going to be out? Is there? Well, as always, a lot of different products. What's lot your favorite? What, what are the three things that you are looking forward to? that you think is something that's going to sort of... Within the next collection? Yes. Okay, there's um, a range of cookware that I believe is very interesting. Okay. A range of cutlery. Cutlery. Cutlery, mm -hmm. again. Um, and some accessories. Such as? I, I can't tell much about them, unfortunately, okay. but uh, be ready to be surprised, mm -hmm. as always. There will be a lot of different materials, metal, plastic, ceramic, wood, a mm -hmm. um, lot of different languages of design mm -hmm. and I really believe it would be an interesting 
launch of new okay. products. And in this current spring summer collection that's already out, what are yeah. the, your three, three favorite things? What, three what is favorites. it that you think okay. you have to have? One is a basket design, a basket and a centerpiece designed by Karim Rashid. Okay. Uh, that I don't think will have a huge commercial success, but I personally like a lot. Yes. I mean, a stainless steel with very straight and sharp lines mm -hmm. and design. A whole set for the table with uh, dinnerware, flatware, and glassware designed by Marcel Wanders, okay. the Dutch designer, that is a completely different language of design, but a very interesting project okay. for us. And then, uh, what else? Oh, there's a little, a little object. Okay. That is called, des it's a desk organizer. It's desk organizer? Desk organizer. Okay. Um, designed by Frederick Guris, who proved to have a very good feel for uh, good design applied to small and affordable objects. 